AMD, so they're they're back. I shouldn't say back, but they've really stepped up their AI game. Uh, as you said, they invited us out to San Jose last week for the launch of their MI300 series um, accelerators. And there are two flavors in there, um, the X and the, and the A. I'm going to go over these quickly and then give a little bit of color commentary. X is the GPU. MI300X is their GPU, discrete GPU. Sole focus on AI. This is like your beast going up against the NVIDIA H100 um, GPU. Really strong performance numbers they demonstrated. We'll get into a little bit more on that in a second. Um, but squarely um, playing in that AI space. Um, the MI300A is their APU, their accelerated processing unit, where they fuse, not, I shouldn't say fuse, but they put um, CPUs and GPU cores on the same die um, and give coherent memory uh, and uh, allow for kind of the best of both worlds. So when you look at workloads like HPC and some types of, uh, of AI uh, training, um, there is a benefit there. And that's more of a Grace Hopper kind of um, competitor, not necessarily the H100. Um, so, you know, the MI300, it's, it's the third in their series. You know, AMD, a few years back, you know, they focused on getting their CPU strategy right, really nailed it with Ryzen and Epic, kind of found, you know, kind of exit velocity with those, if you will, kind of they're cruising uh, on their own. And Lisa and her team, turn their focus to their instinct series or GPUs um, and launch the, the 100 and the 200. But the 300 really is significant for a couple of reasons. One, I see it as the first time where uh, AI, AMD <clears throat> has significantly challenged NVIDIA from a performance perspective. Um, just kind of raw performance, you know, throw benchmarks on one versus the other and, and how do they compare. That's really important. Two, the timeliness of MI300 is critical. If you have cloud companies and customers, I'm hearing eight to nine month waits for the H100 to, to be deployed, right? The cloud market and enterprise is starved for GPU capabilities. So AMD plays a, a very strong alternative to uh, the H100. The, MI, uh, the MI300 plays a strong alternative to the H100. Uh, not that it is a second, uh, a second choice, but it is there as a, a strong alternative. Uh, and the other thing is with this, what I see as being broad cloud adoption, you know, we, we saw a lot of them on stage, Pat. Um, what makes that interesting is the big challenge Emma AMD has had in the past around adoption of its GPU has been kind of the ecosystem, right? Everybody writes in CUDA or uses, the, uh, uses CUDA uh, and that kind of locks them into the NVIDIA track. Well, as the cloud folks start to use, by the way, when you're writing in, or when you're writing in PyTorch, you don't even need CUDA. Um, but when the cloud folks are starting to optimize for the AMD architecture in addition to the NVIDIA architecture, that's all getting contributed back into the open source, which levels the playing field a little bit more and a little bit more for players like AMD and also for players like Intel that are going to come in and, and other accelerators. So all around, really cool, uh, really cool launch. I don't think they're going to be able to make these things fast enough. Um, but that's how that's how big the demand is out there. And while I don't think NVIDIA is going to, you know, uh, be toppled with this with this launch, it's AMD certainly is going to find a, a strong place in the market. Yeah, I can't believe the the amount of readership that all of us got on this announcement. I mean, on one post on LinkedIn, a hundred and ten thousand people come in <laughs> and, and and check it out, and you yeah. know, all in all, I think we've had. You know, a couple hundred thousand people tuning into the content between you and I uh, on this on this announcement. And granted, it was across uh, PC uh, and data center. Uh, but uh, what's more compelling um, than you know the thought that somebody other in, other than Nvidia uh, could have something uh, competitive uh, out there? Mm -hmm. and, and what really dawned on me. And by the way. As analysts, we always need to <laughs> watch what we say and and, and, and how we say it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wrote, personally wrote one of the first white papers on Rockham uh, as an analyst. And mm -hmm. uh, Rockham was, is basically AMD software. It started off in high performance computing, yeah. right? Where it's flops, not tops. Yeah. And, you know, with it, they won a bunch of national labs uh, mm -hmm. work with it. But we should never confuse high performance computing software 
and that that is optimized to uh, for AI AI training uh, that, that 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 runs on this. Um, but with Rockham Six, I'm convinced by a few statements that I heard on stage and a couple of things that I've heard uh, back channeled uh, uh, with the IaaS and the and the SaaS providers that Rockham Six is real, uh, and the fact that the guy from Meta got up on stage and 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 yeah. and actually had anything nice to say about anybody's software that wasn't their own right. might be the first time uh I've, I've i've heard that right and and meta being the inventors of pytorch right, right. uh meta uh be behind um, um ocp mm -hmm. uh meta behind uh the big llama models right for them to say anything nice uh, mm -hmm. makes a uh, makes a big difference um amd threw up this gigantic uh tam chart you know, they moved it, I think they said, uh, from 200 billion to 400 billion in 2024. That's right. Now, that's just data center. Okay. So uh, that's GPUs plus ASICs. And um, AMD gets 10% of that share in 2024. It almost doubles the size of the business. Now, yes. that's too much. I like, I, I can't even fathom that. Let's say they get 5%. Okay. Right. Or right. that's, that's an additional $20 billion. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and it's just, it, it's mind boggling uh, at, at the growth and, and, and Paul, you were knee deep uh, in this uh, when the internet, you know, web 1.0, I think you worked for uh, either at t or WorldCom or MCI at the time you were building this. I've never seen this craziness, this amount of craziness. Yeah. Paul, any uh, uh, any 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 thoughts on this AI wave that, that we're seeing here? Uh, I, I just one comment here. Uh, I don't think Nvidia was too happy with uh, some of the statements that uh, AMD made in terms of how much uh, that much faster it was than the uh, H100s. I think. They had yeah, yeah, they. Yeah. yeah, they actually came out with that post. Yeah. Uh, which uh, uh, we put out there. And it was interesting is the CEO of Grok uh, subtweeted my tweet. Uh, gosh, we sound like we're a bunch of teenagers here. Um, <laughs> basically saying, you know, what NVIDIA was doing was benchmarking because um, AMD optimizes for tokens in and NVIDIA optimizes for tokens out. Right. Yep. Uh, so anyways, Positive it's news, Rock knows. So. Positive news. There's more competition, and competition is good for consumers. It increases innovation. It lowers cost over time, and makes technology more accessible. That is my story, and I am sticking to it, folks. <laughs>